Some of you may remember a couple of weeks ago I turned a bowl out of weeping birch. This piece right here is a cutoff from that. And I think we're going to make a vase. It might be a bowl. It might be a bowl vase. I'm not sure. It's, it's a pretty big top. I could probably make a, a bowl out of it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Now, we've covered this before. I found the center of the bottom. This is the bottom. This will be the stem of the vase, and this will be the top. So how do I find the top center in relationship to the bottom? Uh, last time I covered it, and the first time I covered it, there were several good ideas from you viewers. W what I need to do here is I'm going to put this, you can see I punched a little hole. I'm going to put that on my tailstock, and then I'm just going to push this up against my chuck over here. I'm just going to, it's just going to set against there. We're not going to turn it like that, but we're just going to get it set up for marking the top. And now we want to transfer this bottom center to the top center. Like I said, there were several good suggestions. I'm going to use this knockout rod, and this comes over here to the end of the, the other end of the headstock, the outside end and goes through here and what I did before is I just I just did that I just knocked it on there to make an impression in the wood but it's it's hard it can be hard to see that impression so someone said well I'll put some lipstick on there well that's a good idea someone else said grease just some just some like wheel bearing grease or something that would make a mark yes it would or and someone else suggested chalk well I know I've got some chalk in one of these drawers around here. I can't find it. I'm not going in the house to get lipstick. Grease is messy. I'm going to use this marker. So I'm just going to put a little on the end there. Come in over here to this end. And I don't have to really knock it this time. I can just, I'll just turn it. I'll just turn it to make that transfer the paint to the top of the piece. And hopefully that will have worked. And there it is. So now I know the center is in the middle of that round dot. I'll just take my awl. And there we go. So now I can drill a hole where I'm poking a hole with my awl. I'll drill a hole in there. I can screw that onto my woodworm screw that I'll put in the chuck. And that'll hold it up there so that I can put a tenon on this end. Pretty clever, you guys, with your marking suggestions. Good job. That's what we love, group participation. So now I've drilled my hole for my woodworm screw, and I'll just screw it on there. And I'm not going to do any turning on the outside of this. We're going to keep the bark, all of it. I considered knocking these corners off, rounding them over. I, I still may do that, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to keep them square. We'll see how it looks once it gets to spinning. I will be sanding and finishing the outside. We're not going to sand so much that we, we remove the bark. I don't know if you've ever dealt with this birch bark, but if I direct some air on here, this will get a little noisy maybe. You can see that just wants to peel up and off of there. And I've already done that some before I started today's video and blew a lot of it off. You can see the difference in the white and this is a little bit pinkish. I think all that white will come off. But you know, you gotta stop somewhere and I'm, I'm not sure that it would actually ever let me stop. Sanding it with a Sandro Flex might do the trick. That's what I'm counting on. I sure hope so. But the first thing we have to do is put a tenon down here. So let's do that. I'm going to start with a half inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 450 RPM, mask and face shield on. Now you'll notice when the piece is spinning, it looks like it's all screw wacky. That's because the spalting, it may be, it may be this little dot of spalting over here is making a second circle or it may be this, but if I hold my finger here in the center, it's right on the money, but it is hard to tell which one's the real circle and which one's the spalting circle. I think the real circle's the one in the middle, I think. It's, it's a little disconcerting, I can tell you that. Yep, that's the one. Now 
Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of my tenon. Now with all this wonderful spalting comes along punkiness and we experienced that in the uh, bowl that I made. There's uh, not much I can do about it. it. I tried hardening it up before and it just didn't work that well. But we, now we got a flat bottom, we've got a tenon. Let's do some sanding. Well I forgot something. I, I talked about removing these corners. Uh, when I set up the center of my bottom, I took that into account. I centered it over that way so that this, these points would be closest to the tool rest and everything else is far away. So I could actually turn those away if I want to. I don't know that we'd ever get to round. We, we, we might. We might get all the way around. So I need your input. Of course, we always need your input. What's it going to be? Round it up or leave that side flat. I hear you. I hear you. You want me to take those corners off. Jeez. Okay. All right. I hear three people that want, want to keep the corners, but the rest of you seem to want them to come off. So I can do that. Let me get set up and we'll cut the corners off. Still with the half inch bowl gouge, still at 450 RPM. Careful, Phil. Don't go too far, bud. Don't I just know it? Well, that's uh, that's very good. I think it is an improvement. So we're gonna call that good. We sure don't want to go any further. For those of you disappointed, don't be mad at me. Majority rules, you know. All right. Now time for sanding. Other than just a little bit of sanding with a two-inch sanding disc down here to clean up the bottom. I'm going to be doing all of the sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 120 grit and then I'll switch to 180 grit and I'll most likely stop there. I'll see, I'll see how the bark is adhering. We'll just find out about it. So let me get my mask on here and I'll show you how it's going to work. And then I'll come at it from the other direction as well. And then we'll just spin the piece up a little bit. About 350 RPM or so. And I'll just hold this in here. Like that. And out here like this. So that won't be too bad. See, it just, it just, it's like it just never stops. I've done it before and I got it to where it kind of stopped and then get some finish on there and it seems to be okay after that. We just have to get it to smoothish. See you guys in a bit. We'll put some sanding sealer on there. I think, probably. Well, wonder of wonders, I think I got I think I got the bark to stay put. You see it has changed from white to yellow in a lot of places. I don't know if it'll change back to white when, once it's been out in the open air for a while or I don't know. I'm thinking maybe not, but maybe. I'm going to put uh, sanding sealer all over the whole thing. I'm going to use a brush. And it's going to bring out that beautiful, beautiful bark like this up here. Now this might look rough because, you know, it's bark, but it's not rough. You can run your hand all over any part of this. It's all nice and smooth. Textured, but smooth texture. Hey, my friend Larry over at the Wood Whirler. He's been sick. A lot of you probably watch Larry. I've been watching him for years. He's been, he's been on YouTube for many years, and he, and he got sick. He's coming back. He's feeling better. And if you wouldn't mind going over there and giving Larry a... A view or two and a like and a subscribe I know he would appreciate it and the other day I watched him do a piece 
a multi-axis piece, and I think it's one of his best ever. I'm going to link to his channel, maybe directly to that video, because I, I really enjoyed it, and you probably will too. While you're there, find the little uh, magnifying glass so that you can search on his channel. Probably search for the word explosion. I think that's the word that he used. I like to say that wood doesn't explode, but man, when I watch that, I changed my mind. He had a piece blow up on him, <laughs> and it did damage right up to the ceiling, took out his light fixtures, took out half the wall. I mean, it was, it was, uh, I hate to say the coolest thing I ever saw. I hate to say that, Larry, sorry. It was amazing amazing amount of explosion so that, that's one you don't want to miss either his name's larry his channel name is the wood whirler w-h-i-r-l-e-r -E the wood whirler okay well i'm gonna let this set up for um well however long it takes it's kind of cold it's about 40 40 degrees out here so probably an hour or so and i'll put another coat of this sanding sealer on i don't know if i'll put shellac on now or if i'll wait until it's until the inside is done and do the shellac all at once. That's probably what I'll do. I'll let you know what I decide. I, I might put it on now. Anyway, I'll see you here in a bit. We'll get it turned around and start hollowing it out. I'm going to drill a two and a half inch hole. Uh, I may drill a larger hole after that. I'm not sure. We'll just see how it looks. Lathe is going to be spinning at about 190 RPM. Two and a half inch hole. I'm just going to go real easy and slow, so I won't show you all of this. It's all going to look pretty much the same anyway. Now this is end grain. Uh, typically when you're turning a bowl, you want to approach this way from the outside in. But this is end grain, so we want to go from the inside out. But I'll probably end up doing both ways. We're going to be turning at 470 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. You see, I'm just about there. So we need to decide if we want to go and let there be a dip out here. It won't appear anywhere else. There's plenty of room everywhere else. I don't know. I'll just keep working at it and see what, see what happens. can't come out this way much further I'm gonna come out the side down this way I sure don't want to do that well it's even thinner over here well I think we've just about covered the turning spectrum here every time I use my negative rake scraper people ask where'd you get that it looks huge well it partially looks huge because the camera zoomed in so it looks a lot thicker and bigger than it is it's an inch and a half wide I don't know, it looks like it's three-eighths of an inch thick, maybe a little tiny bit more than that. And it's uh, the one-and-a-half inch scraper from Benjamin's Best, an LX-130. I ground the negative rake on there. It doesn't come that way. It comes with just the bottom grind on it. I ground the top grind. They're 36 degrees top and bottom. Just telling you, I don't get anything to tell you. I'm just heading off the questions, that's all. And I did have to sharpen this up after that last root ball I did where I had kept hitting rocks with it. So I think it'll be good to go. Let's find out. I'm just trying to smooth the transition between what I've turned with my gouge and what I drilled with my Forstner bit. I think I can probably sand the rest of it. That's 
Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's about all we're going to do but sand and finish, so let's do that. I think I can do all of the sanding with my 2 inch sanding disc. I'm going to start at 80 grit on the inside and then we'll do the top. Uh, and I think I can, I think I can reach all the way in there. We'll find out. Lathe will be spinning forward at about 350. Yep, that should be pretty easy. I'll do that up through 400 grit. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Can you hear the rain on my rooftop? It's been raining for a while. Not really hard. Kind of a real heavy drizzle. So I went in the house to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> And just outside the door, I have a big, uh, pretty good sized cedar tree. Son of a gun, those branches were hanging down lower than they were when I came out here. And I just got a face full, head full of water. Just drenched me. It's just about like taking a shower. Well, that's just the way it is this time of year, huh? But I'll tell you what, I'll be pruning those branches off next time they're dry. Well, I like this piece quite a little bit. I think I made the right choice trimming off those uh, corners. Early on when I did that, it gives it more of a natural shape than, than if we had two corners sticking out up here. Sure is some beautiful spalting. I can't get my hand all the way in there, so I'm going to use a brush. Well, that's about what it's going to look like. Well, it is kind of weird grain though, isn't it? It's like it's uh, punky, but it's just, it just isn't. I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. So I'll get a couple of coats of this sanding sealer on, a couple of coats of shellac like I did on the outside. And I'll bring you back and we'll take that tenon off. So I'll see you in a little while. Looks good, huh? Bye. Well, as much as I'm happy with the finish on the outside of this piece, I'm less than happy with the finish on the top and inside of this piece. I've got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to place the item. <laughs> I don't know if it's a bowl or a vase. The art piece over the block of wood and bring up my tailstock and apply some pressure. Bring up my tool rest. It's about as close to perfect as possible, so that's what we're going with. Turning at 450 RPM with a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, I'll begin to remove the tenon. I just want to check for clearance. It looks like we have good clearance, and we do. That's pretty small, so I'm going to switch to a swept back bowl gouge and I'm going to turn the speed down about 200 RPM. I'm pretty sure this is going to break away before we ever get all the way through it, just because of that real soft, punky wood. Now I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when it breaks away or stops turning, we'll know we're through. Uh, I might be able to get a little further. Or not. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, wow, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. Well, here it is, one weeping birch vase. We're going to call it a vase in the books. I love the outside. 
inside, inside the side walls, nice and smooth and shiny. But this is end grain, it's all end grain. That's part of it, but mostly it's because it's it's punky. It's but it's kind of a different kind of punky. You can see the punky maybe in the very very bottom, as on the bottom here. Um, but the top isn't like that. It's not it's not textured. It's just super soft. Now end grain will soak up the finish and the sanding sealer and all that. I expected that. I put on way more coats than normal. I don't know six. Probably six coats of sanding sealer and three coats of shellac and it just it just sucked it up. It is what it is. It'll still work. So you can put some dried flowers in there if you want. Set some cute little things around the edges. And it'll look great. Real nice finish on the outside. I, I'm very happy about that. And it was fun. It was a fun piece to turn. So there we go. Let me know what you think of it. Thank you Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for that. I truly appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.